It has been a very long time, longer than I can remember, since we've had a meta in Albion that was as dominated by a single weapon line as Curse is dominating right now. Basically, for every scale of activity from solo all the way up to ZVZ, Curse Staves in some form are either top tier meta or just a very strong option. If you are a Curse Staff main right now, there's basically not a single piece of content in Albion where you wouldn't be welcome in. So in this video, I thought I'd help you out by taking all of the Curse Staves and giving you an example build for them, as well as going over sort of what types of content that they typically do well in or that you'll see them in. So starting us off, we have the classic one-handed curse stav. We're going to start our way with sort of solo content-oriented curse staves, and then we'll work our way up to the ZVZ one. So starting with the one-handed curse, the one-handed curse is basically a solo PvP only curse stav. It's basically the only use you're really going to have for this one-handed curse is solo PvP. At solo PvP though, it is very, I mean, just watch this clip, it speaks for itself. Uh, there are four, three one-handed curses so far. And then the person down here is also a one-handed. There's four one-handed curses. Four. Oh, four one-handed right curses. Are you joking? Five. Five. Garant I, what? What is going on? They're all one-handed curses. Every single one. The one-handed curse spot is the perfect weapon to go low IP in and just sort of go and fight people in a solo environment like the mists or riding outside the portal zones or doing any of that sort of stuff. The one-handed curse is perfect for those sorts of environments. You have an absolute buttload of damage that is pretty free. You just need to get your four stacks and press E and something probably will die. And it's super cheap. So if you die, it doesn't really matter too much. The sort of 4.1 curse builds are absolutely insane. So you'll see a couple different variations of these sort of low tier one-handed curse builds, but my favorite is the one-handed curse for your weapon. And then we're gonna be using the shield for our offhand. A lot of people use the torch, but I actually think the shield is a little bit better. Really, there's no great option for the one-handed curse uh, in terms of offhands that are really cheap. Muizak is a great one, but it's like 50K, which is like as much as a 4.1 set. So just the shield is a great option for a little bit extra defensiveness. You can also go torch if you want a little bit more cooldown reduction. For your armor, Mage Cow is a great way to get even more damage or that bop ability to get nice spacing against melees. And then on your chest piece, Cleric Grove is a classic for the one-handed curse, very good. And on your boots, Soldier Roots are very good for this build. You don't really need a cape with this build since it's aimed for 4.1 really low tier gear. And for your food and potions, stews are the best food and usually poison potions for that extra damage. Next on the Cursed Stabs list, we're going to go over to the Cursed Skull because this is your other really solid 1v1 solo option for Cursed Weapons. However, the Cursed Skull is very specialized for Corrupted Dungeons. It has been Corrupted Dungeon meta for quite a long time, and it still is. It is one of the most high played weapons in Corrupted Dungeons with a very good win rate. The current iteration of the build for the Cursed Skull in Corrupted Dungeons is obviously the Cursed Skull for your weapon. You're going to run the Hunter Hood for your helmet or Cleric Cowl for another option. And then your chest piece is always Mercenary Jacket and your boots are always some form of plate boots, usually Soldier Boots again, as really you only run Rejuvenating Sprint. For your Cape Food and Potions, Cape is going to be the Martlock Cape. Food is sort of personal choice. Pure Mist Roast Snapper is usually the go-to choice. Well, it's a little bit expensive. If you want a cheap option, you can also use omelets. And then for your potions, generally speaking, healing potions are kind of matchup specific. Another really popular one is Gigantify Potions. I will also note here at the end that while Curse Skull is currently used mostly for Corrupted Dungeons, it also is pretty good at sort of small scale PvP with a small team. However, mostly in environments that have a lot of choke points. So 5v5 Hellgates is sometimes run and things like the roads you can get some value in as well. Moving on to our last really strong solo option for Curse Staffs, we have the Demonic Staff. So the Demonic Staff is 
probably one of the best weapons in the game just overall right now. It is just so incredibly strong. It has tons of versatility. Its ability is really good. It's just an overall really incredible staff. So this is definitely one you could look to spec up if you do solo or even if you do some group content. So again, the Demonic Staff is very good in open world 1v1, but it's also pretty good in Corrupted Dungeon 1v1. Really, any solo environment Demonic Staff is going to be pretty good. It does very well against other sort of meta 1v1 type builds, especially open world type builds. But it's also the go-to choice in terms of Cursed Staffs for like mid-scale, small-scale group content. One of the reasons that Cursed Staffs are so overpowered right now is their W ability Armor Piercer is incredibly strong. Uh, it's one of the best abilities in the game right now. And so a lot of times in group content, you want to curse staff in your party for armor piercer rather than for the E or anything. And usually demonic staff is the staff that gets slotted in to fill that armor piercer spot. So for example, build, it kind of depends whether you're doing solo stuff or you're doing group stuff. Personally, I like doing solo stuff, so I'll give you an example of solo build. You have the demonic staff for your staff, a cleric cowl for your helmet, assassin jacket for your chest piece, and then plate shoes for your boots. I would suggest guardian boots. For cape, food and potions, it is a martlock cape, beef stews, and healing potions. Moving on to the sort of mid-scale PvP focused cursed tabs, we have the Great Cursed Staff. So this is probably the least popular of all cursed tabs in the current meta. So you're not going to see it too often, but it still is very good just because curse staffs are very good. Typically, you're going to want to run a great curse in like a two to four man sort of group size in something like the Ava Roads or Roaming the Open World. It is particularly good. For an example, build to run along the great curse staff, a cleric cowl with a mage robe and sandals of purity, along with a Thetford cape, beef stews, and resistance or gigantify potions. Moving on to our more group-oriented PvP weapons, we have first up is the Life Curse Staff. Now, I will say right out that the Life Curse Staff does have some pretty good uses outside of group PvP, like it is still a really good 1v1 staff for things like Carpet Dungeons, but I would say its primary use is going to be in group sizes probably 10 plus. And in those large groups, the Life Curse Staff is a basically a must. Any clump and dump style team comp is going to have a Life Curse Staff. Its ability is like none other purging all of the stuff in an AoE. It is absolutely essential for this type of playstyle. Now, because this is more oriented towards large groups, its build is sort of going to depend on what the rest of your group is running and what your shot caller wants you to run. But as a general example, we can run with the Mist Caller for our offhand, Assassin Hood on our helmet, a Judicator Armor or Demon Armor for a chest piece, and then any Leather Shoes for that refreshing sprint ability. Lastly, for the largest scale of PvP in ZVZs, we have the Damnation Staff. This is a basically a must-have in large Zergs, although having too many of them isn't super viable. Usually in a Zerg, you'll see one to three of them. A giant AoE pierce is incredibly valuable in a ZVZ, so these are, you'll always have a spot in a Zerg if you play the Damnation Staff, unless there's too many other people trying to play it as well. For the build, I would personally go to your guild's builds. They probably have ZVZ builds and reference that. But as an example, one, the one I like using is a knight helmet, a scholar robe, and then a leather shoes for a freshing sprint with a Fort Sterling cape, resistance potions, and really high tier omelets. Last but not least, the one curse staff left out because it is more of a PvE curse staff rather than a PvP curse staff is the Shadow Caller. Now, curse staves in general are just not great at PvE, not because it's particularly hard for them, but rather that it takes a while for their damage to stack up, whereas other weapons have upfront damage, so it takes them a little bit longer. The Shadow Caller, however, has a very unique place in PvE as it is one of the best weapons for doing solo of group content, like soloing static dungeons and group dungeons. So if you want to spec up curse tabs, this is a great way to do it, soloing statics and group content. With the Shadow Caller, a build you can use is the Shadow Caller with the Mist Caller with the offhand, an Assassin Hood for your helmet, a Hellion Jacket for your chest piece, and then Shoes of Tenacity for your shoes. Along with these, you can run a Demon Cape, Pork Roasts, and Invisibility Potions. 
Okay, and that is it. That is one example build and sort of the ideal content for every curse staff. They are very powerful right now, so I'd highly suggest you either use them now or maybe don't use them and don't spec them up because there's a really good chance that they're going to get nerfed with how just dominant they are in the overall meta of Albion. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and it helps you and I will see you in the next one.